Now that we have our Revit structure family complete, and we've saved all the family types, we've saved the parameters, we've saved the dimensions, we can now start thinking about loading this particular Revit family into our Revit project. Now I have a Revit project sitting behind this family in the family editor. So when I do click on this load into project icon here, it'll load straight into that particular project. You'll find load into project on the modify tab in the family editor. Now, before we do anything though, be safe. Make sure that you go to the application menu, go to save as and save as family. Because I've got a project open, it goes to the projects folder for that Revit project, the RVT file. So I'm going to save over my existing 600 by 600 SHS RFA. Now, obviously, you might have named this as something else. So just select it, click on save, job done. Now, that has saved the family and the family types. So when I start thinking about loading this into my project, it should load all of the family types in as well. Just do a quick sanity check, though. Again, check your family types. As you can see there, the column thickness is locked at 35 for that one with a column height of 3000. Check that you've got the other one, 50. It's right there. Check that the column thickness there goes to 50. Apply that now. You can see the 50 changes there in the actual family in the editor on the screen. If I go back to the 35, like so, and apply that, it updates there as well. So I've got those two types inside my 600 by 600 square hollow section family. I'll OK that now. So again, remember, do a save as and a family like that. Save it where you need to save it and then click on save and make sure also you check your family types. So let's go to that modify tab now and let's load this into our project. When I click on load into project, when I come into the drawing area, can you see it's trying to load in my 600 by 600 by 35 square hollow section. If I go to the properties palette here and click on the down arrow, you'll see I've also got my 50 as well. So I can select either of those. So if I go to 50 now, that has now got a 50 thickness instead of my 35 thickness like so. So I can select either of those from my 600 by 600 square hollow section family. Now I'm just going to drop that there and click. Hit escape to deselect the tools there, entering that into the drawing area. If I zoom in now, there's my column. If I click on that, like so, the only things I can edit on it, can you see, are the actual placement dimensions. If I look here though, and look in the properties palette, can you see my column height is locked, 3800. That's because it's locked between those two levels, my entry level and my floor level, because my column height is locked to those two levels. As you can see, I can't change that in the properties palette at all. The whole idea of that is, it's locking it to the height that you need in your project. That's why I left it as it was in the Revit family. So what we've done there, we've inserted a Revit family that we've created that is parametric. It's parametric because we can go in here and these values here update when I select that particular column. So if I zoom in now, really, really close on the top here, and then select the column, you'll see at the moment it's a 50. Watch the thickness at the top of the column. I select 35. Can you see that update? That's the whole idea of a parametric Revit family. You don't need to edit anything. You just select the type that you want and you're done. Now, the good thing is, because we've got that there, if I go to edit type, there's my family, there's my type. I can create a duplicate now. Let's say I want a different one. Let's say a different thickness. Come in here like so, and I want, let's say, a 60 like that. So the name of that is 60, and I'll also put in there the SHS to be consistent and OK that. And I change the column thickness there to 60, and I OK that now. I've got another new one there. Can you see that? So that's added that, and it's created a new family type for me from the properties palette. That's the benefit of creating these parametric families. They can be edited on the fly in the properties palette and create a new type there or you can go into the family editor and create new types in there as well.